The theology of Tertullian of Carthage. Tertullian of Carthage ministered from about 190 AD to 225 AD. The historical evidence proves that the founding fathers of Arianism and Trinitarianism were influenced by pagan Greek philosophical thought, while Justin Hippolytus, Clement of Alexandria, and Origen were clearly influenced by Greek philosophy, the historical evidence proves that Tertullian was also influenced by elements of Greek philosophy himself. Tertullian wrote, and I quote, Some of our number who are versed in ancient literature have composed books by means of which it may be clearly seen that we have embraced nothing new or monstrous, nothing in which we have not the support of common and public literature." End quote. Edwin Hatch wrote that Tertullian believed that he was teaching the same thing as the Greek philosophers. And I quote, Elsewhere, the same writer, speaking of Tertullian, founds an argument for the toleration of Christianity on the fact that its opponents maintain it to be a kind of philosophy teaching the very same doctrines as the philosophers. Cited by Edwin Hatch in his book, The Influence of Greek Ideas on Christianity. On page 134 of this same book, church historian Edwin Hatch wrote, Tertullian, though he asks, what resemblance is there between a philosopher and a Christian, between a disciple of Greece and a disciple of heaven? nevertheless expresses Christian truths in philosophical terms. Tertullian wrote in his Treatise on the Soul, Chapter 2, Heraclitus, a Greek philosopher, was quite right. So Tertullian was clearly influenced by Greek philosophers and even praised them. The historical evidence proves that Tertullian was the first Christian writer to use the word Trinity with the words three distinct persons. The new Schaff Herzog Encyclopedia of Religious Knowledge plainly documents the historical influence that Greek philosophy had on the development of the Trinity. The doctrine of the Logos and the Trinity received their shape from Greek fathers who were much influenced directly or indirectly by the Platonic philosophy that errors and corruptions crept into the church from this source cannot be denied. So the Greek fathers were those early Christian writers who adopted Greek Platonic thought into their beliefs. The book entitled The Church of the First Three Centuries says, The doctrine of the Trinity was of gradual and comparatively late formation. It had its origin in a source entirely foreign from that of the Jewish and Christian scriptures. It grew up and was engrafted on Christianity through the hands of the Platonizing Fathers. Church historian Jaroslav Pelikan wrote that Neoplatonic elements were unmistakably present in the Trinitarian definition of one God in three persons. And I quote, The doctrine of the Trinity must be interpreted in a manner that would be consistent with a a priori definition of the deity of God. One essence, three persons. Neoplatonic elements were unmistakably present in this definition." End quote. The writings of Tertullian himself prove that he believed that the Son was created by the Father before the world was created, and that the Son was always subordinate to the Father even before his birth in Bethlehem. Therefore, the chief founding father of Trinitarian theology was really an Arian who wrote in Against Hermogenes chapter 3, and I quote, God is in like manner a father, and he is also a judge. But he has not always been father and judge, merely on the ground of his having always been God. For he could not have been the father previous to the Son, nor a judge previous to sin. 
There was, however, a time when neither sin existed with him, with the Father, nor the Son. So Tertullian clearly taught that God was not always a father to the Son, but he became a father when the Son was begotten. So Tertullian clearly believed that the Son did not exist as a timeless Son. There was, however, a time when neither sin existed with him, with the Father, nor the Son. In Against Praxis chapter 7, Tertullian wrote that the Word of God the Father assumed a form and voice when God said, Let there be light in Genesis 1-3. And I quote, Then therefore does the Word also himself assume his own form and glorious garb, his own sound and vocal utterance, when God said, Let there be light. This is the perfect nativity of the Word when he proceeds from God, formed by him first to devise and think out all things under the name of wisdom, or by proceeding from himself, he became his first begotten son. Now, if you look at this carefully, you notice that the word, the logos, according to Tertullian, assumed his own form and glorious garb, assumed his own sound and vocal utterance when God said, let there be light in Genesis 1-3. So God as God cannot assume the form and have his own sound and vocal utterance. So Tertullian clearly believed that the Son had been created before the world was created. And then when God said, let there be light in Genesis 1-3, that's when the Son assumed his own form and glorious garb. And also, that's when the Son had his own sound and vocal utterance. Therefore, the Son could not have spoken as a God the Son until God the Father created the Son. Well, I certainly don't believe that, and oneness theology does not believe that, nor do Trinitarians believe this. Yet, Trinitarians call Tertullian one of their founding fathers. Then Tertullian says, this is the perfect nativity of the word of the Logos formed by him first. So according to Tertullian, the word, the Logos, was formed by the Father first, and he became his first begotten son in time, rather than a timeless, eternal son. And then it goes on to say, because begotten before all things, Colossians 1.15, and his only begotten also, because alone begotten of God, in a way peculiar to himself, from the womb of his own heart, speaking of the Father's heart. So Tertullian clearly stated that the Son was begotten from the womb of the Father's heart when God said, let there be light in Genesis 1-3. This is the perfect nativity of the word. The definition of nativity means the occasion of a person's birth or the place of my nativity. In Petrology, Volume 2, Trinitarian Church historian Johannes Quassen wrote that Tertullian believed that the Son is not eternal. These are the words of Johannes Quassen, a Trinitarian Church historian. Tertullian believed that the Son is not eternal and that Tertullian believed in the subordinationism of the Son to the Father. And here is a quote from Johannes Quassen in Petrology, Volume 2. Tertullian could not shake off entirely the influence of subordinationism. Although wisdom and word are identical names for the second person in the Trinity, Tertullian distinguishes between a prior birth as wisdom before the creation and at the moment of creation. Hence, it was then that the word itself received its manifestation and its completion, namely sound and voice when God said, let there be light. This is the perfect birth of the word. When it proceeds from God, it was first produced by him. Johannes Quassen goes on to say, speaking of Tertullian's teachings, he became the firstborn son, as generated before all as only son. Thus the son as such is not eternal. This is 
Johannes Quassen, stating that Tertullian believed that the sun as such is not eternal. The analogies by which Tertullian tries to explain the Godhead also indicate his subordinationist tendencies. So we know, even according to Trinitarian historians such as Johannes Quassen, Tertullian was not a true Trinitarian. He believed that the Son was created at the beginning of the creation of God when God said, let there be light in Genesis 1-3. That's when the Son assumed his own form and his own sound and vocal utterance, his voice. That was the perfect birth of the Word of God. And it was first produced by him. He became the firstborn. The Son, as such, is not eternal, according to Tertullian. And Johannes Quassen verifies this. Tertullian wrote that the modalistic monarchians, those who believed in oneness theology, were always the majority of the faithful in the West, and Origen admitted that the modalistic monarchians were the general run of Christians in the East. If you go to Origen's commentary of the Gospel of John, book 123, you find that Origen spoke of the modalists as the general run of Christians who were teaching that Jesus is the Most High God, but Origen disagreed by saying he is a lesser God person, another semi-Aryan teacher, as well as Tertullian. Tertullian wrote a book entitled Against Praxis, containing his polemic against the most influential leader of the modalistic monarchians within the late 2nd century and early years of the 3rd century. In Against Praxis, chapter 3, Tertullian wrote, and I quote, For all the simple people, that I say not the thoughtless and ignorant, who are always the majority of the faithful, are startled at the dispensation of three in one. They claim that the plurality and ordinance of Trinity is a division of unity. From Against Praxis, chapter 3. Tertullian clearly stated they who are always the majority of the faithful Christians rejected the plurality and ordinance of Trinity. The famed Eastern Orthodox historian Jaroslav Pelikan admitted that Tertullian's statement in Against Praxis chapter 3 proves that the modalistic monarchians were the simple people who are always the majority of the faithful. Tertullian himself proved four historical facts. Fact 1. Tertullian was the first Christian writer on record to use the word Trinity with the words three persons. Fact 2. Tertullian believed that the Son was created as a subordinate lesser God person in heaven before his birth in Bethlehem, which is akin to Arianism. Fact 3. Tertullian admitted that the oneness modalists were always the majority of the faithful Christian believers in his lifetime, and that this Christian majority believed that Jesus had eternally existed as the Father before becoming a man. In fact, four, no early Christians that lived during the lifetime of Tertullian from 190 to 225 AD. Actually, he lived before 190, but during the time he ministered, roughly from 190 to 225 AD, no early Christians that lived during his ministry lifetime believed that Jesus pre-existed as the timeless, eternal God, except the modalistic monarchians. Therefore, it was the oneness modalists who are teaching that the Son has always existed as the eternal God by being the Father before he was begotten. Whereas those that were teaching against the modalists were the semi-Arians like Tertullian, who are stating that Jesus is not an eternal, timeless God person before his birth in Bethlehem, but he was created. So Tertullian believed a lot like modern-day Jehovah's Witnesses, where the Son was created as a creature and then was born again a second time on the earth as a man. For more videos on church history and scripture, subscribe to our YouTube channel above or visit us on the web at apostolicchristianfaith.com. Lord bless.